Pegasus. I pulled the weekdays card. What? That's right. Now I can battle with my monsters every Monday through Friday. This is it, Yugi. Great move. You can win this. Go, Yugi. Attack. Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, Monday through Friday at 3.30 on Kids WB. So I've been thinking, does the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters anime need a reboot? Because the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters anime is absolutely beloved. It's really truly something that kind of struck a cultural chord with people. But it's no secret that the Yu-Gi-Oh! IP in general is not as popular as it once was. I would say that Yugi Mania, that is that time period where everybody was watching it on TV, buying the cards, collecting merch, everybody just wanted to be involved in Yu-Gi-Oh, probably peaked at around 2004, 2005, right around the time when the original anime stopped airing. Now, since then, we've gotten a plenty of sequel Yu-Gi-Oh anime series. There's GX, 5Ds, Zexel, Arc 5, and Brains. Plus, there's also Yu-Gi-Oh 7s and Yu-Gi-Oh Go Rush, though some people would argue that those are more spin-offs. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh already had a very strong foundation. Characters with big personalities, just slinging cards, summoning monsters, and fighting for the sake of the world. And each subsequent anime would carry on some of that legacy while also improving on a lot of elements of it. I would argue that anime like 5Ds and Zexel especially did world building and character arcs and even just duels a lot better than the original did. That said though, with each passing Yu-Gi-Oh anime, interest just kind of decreased a bit. If you were to ask somebody who's just nerd adjacent, who Yugi, Kaiba, Blue Eyes, Exodia, what those characters and concepts are, they would definitely know it. But they'd probably raise an eyebrow if you were to ask them who Yusaku or Yuya Sakaki and Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon are. And you can chalk that up to a bunch of different reasons. Cultural factors, an aging audience, different animation studios being involved, all kinds of things. But regardless of all that, I want to focus on the original Duel Monsters anime based on the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga by Kazuki Takahashi and what that would look like as a reboot. Because there are so many different ideas and possibilities and varying opinions on this anime getting a reboot, or even if it should get a reboot. What it would look like, would people like it, would it make you feel more popular again, is it something that we even need, or is it just nostalgia pandering? This is really important to me because I don't just play the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, I play the video games, I collect the merch, I'm just a fan of the IP in general, I literally have like a giant life-size pot of greed. So yeah, I just wanted to share my thoughts on what a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime reboot could be like, how it might work, and also get everybody else's opinions on this. So I personally think that a new Yu-Gi-Oh! anime with those original characters and themes and monsters could be huge for revitalizing interest in Yu-Gi-Oh! Not to mention a lot of other anime these days have been doing exactly this. Reboots that sort of retell the original story. One Piece is doing one. Dragon Ball has done plenty of them. The cool thing about an anime reboot is that it introduces the IP and the characters in the world to a new audience who may have not even been born when the original was airing or who might just want to see it in, you know, updated modern quality and just with a new coat of paint. Plus, of course, it's a great way to reinvigorate interest in people who already knew about the IP and really loved it to begin with. Yu-Gi-Oh! has actually been seeing a small resurgence within the mainstream in the last couple of years. There have been a lot more licensing deals for merch. I've seen Yu-Gi-Oh! skateboards, way more Yu-Gi-Oh! shirts and other kinds of apparel. We had an Olympics winner this year in Noah Lyles showing off his love for the Yu-Gi-Oh! card game. And two NFL players, George Kittle and Jamal Williams, both were interviewed about their love and interest in Yu-Gi-Oh! And the second one actually plays the game like Master Duel regularly and follows it and keeps up. So there's definitely something there brewing just beneath the surface. And I think that the announcement of a new Yu-Gi-Oh! anime could like blow it all wide open. Okay, so the first question is, what exactly do you adapt in a rebooted Yu-Gi-Oh! anime in 2025? In my opinion, and just from the discourse that I've seen online, there are basically three different ways that you can tackle this. The first and most obvious way would be retelling the original manga work by Kazuki Takahashi more faithfully. Everybody knows about how the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime dub changed and censored a lot of different elements, removed weapons, references to death, religious symbols and iconography, but actually what a lot of people don't know is that the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters anime just changed details from the original manga work. There's different story beats, different kind of character arcs and moments, duels played out differently, 
And I think that you could basically kind of revisit it with, you know, modern animation and everything like that, but also follow the original story much more closely. Some other people want to see Yu-Gi-Oh! Season 0 actually be the one that gets adapted. And I think that this is a little bit tricky. So Yu-Gi-Oh! Season 0 was kind of the precursor to the original anime, and it certainly had some very, very dark themes to it, but it wasn't actually really about playing dual monsters. It was kind of just more of a, like, villain of the week, game of the week, punishment of the week style show. It's very good, don't get me wrong, and it certainly has some heavier, more adult material if you're interested in that, but I don't think that it would necessarily be the most exciting reboot for the mainstream. I do think that super fans of the manga would really love it. We'll kind of put that to the side as its own separate thing. And the last major idea or concept that I hear a lot is revisiting the original story, but giving the characters updated cards, decks, and strategies that better reflect the way that the game is played today. So, for instance, a lot of legacy cards like Buster Blader and Dark Magician and Red Eyes and Flame Swordsman have, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, all gotten their own archetypes and cards and supports. And so by having these characters actually use those cards in the show, it would be a great way to sort of cross-promote the card game, but also just make for more um, interesting, fresh duels that play out with a little bit more tension and a little bit more speed and high-octane gameplay. Because let's face it, the original Yu-Gi-Oh! was pretty much just slinging vanilla monsters at each other back and forth and kind of top decking into decent spells and traps when you need to eventually end the duel. Certainly great entertainment for my kid brain, but not exactly very, you know, thought-provoking or intriguing strategic gameplay. Now, personally, I can get behind any of these options for a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime reboot, but the thing that I resonate with most is the idea of a sort of spiritual retelling of the original Duel Monsters story. So we're obviously going to keep the same faces, Yugi, Kaiba, Joey, Pegasus, Merrick, all the people that you know and love, but we aren't actually going to necessarily do Duelist Kingdom all over again or Battle City. Instead, I think that we could have callbacks to these scenarios but in a bit of a new light. So perhaps Pegasus does host a big tournament and invite all the top talent around the world to it, so you still get Yugi and Joey and Rex and Weevil and Mai, but it's not Duelist Kingdom again. It could be a Duelist Cruise. It could be kind of duels that take place in different parts around the world. It could be a tournament inside of his castle where people kind of go up different floors and play different people and there's like a different sort of matchmaking system. It would certainly invoke the same feeling as Duelist Kingdom, but we wouldn't just be retreading the same ground. We could have the story itself play out a little bit differently. Characters could have different motivations for entering. So maybe in this one, Joey's not necessarily fighting to get prize money for his sister, but perhaps for some other reason to prove himself. Maybe Yugi's grandpa is not stuck in a TV in the Shadow Realm or whatever you want to call that. Instead, he's just here to test his skills or because somebody else challenged him. You could also get a totally different mixture of matchups. So obviously you can have some of the same iconic ones like Yugi versus Weevil or Rex versus Joey, but also some of the things that we just never really got to see. What would happen if Mai faced off against Bandit Keith? What would happen if Rex and Weevil teamed up against the Paradox Brothers? I do want to reiterate that it's probably important that people can still recognize the same general ideas at play, because for a lot of people, the words Duelist Kingdom and Battle City are super nostalgic, so making sort of areas and scenarios that feel reminiscent to those would definitely help to kind of let people feel at ease and comfortable and make this approachable, but it means that we're not retreading the same ground and it's not boring and it doesn't have to conflict directly with the original work. I think this would be super cool, especially because in my version of this idea, we do also utilize these characters' new support cards from the card game. I do want to talk a little bit about how I would adapt the gameplay because I think this is actually a really huge part of it. So Yu-Gi-Oh! to me has a bit of an issue when it comes to translating gameplay to the screen. Like I said before, the original Yu-Gi-Oh! involves a lot of vanilla monsters that are just beat sticks and kind of some basic spells and traps. The monsters attack each other. People occasionally top deck something really cool or set face down cards, but it's very simple and easy to follow, which I think was partly why it was so popular among younger kids. The thing is though, that's not really how the game is played today, and I also think that that might be a bit of an insult to people who just play Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. Plus, if you want this new anime to sort of get people into the card game, it might be weird if there's this disconnect where people are just like 
playing vanillas, but then you go out to the store and buy a Yu-Gi-Oh pack and you realize that there are combos and fast hand traps and chains and everything else going on. So the middle ground that I propose is the characters should use their new support cards that have been introduced in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. These could be direct things like Yu-Gi using the real life Guy the Fierce Knight cards or Buster Blader cards or Dark Magician support. Or you could just kind of get a little bit creative with it. Maybe Rex Raptor is playing the Transcendosaurus archetype from the TCG and Weevil is playing Bee Troopers, for instance. I think this works even better for the side characters like Esperoba or the Paradox Brothers who have even seen their monsters get retrained. So that could be like really, really cool and different. I also think it'd be really cool if like in Yugi's duel against Weevil, which originally was focused kind of around Guy the Fierce Knight, it felt like in the original anime, he uses the Guy the Fierce Knight cards, but then in his duel against Strings, it's more about the Buster Blader cards in that line of support. Same with Joey kind of having access to like a flame swordsman side of his deck, but also a red eye side of the deck or Kaiba getting different duels where he focuses on like the XYZ union cards versus the blue eyes cards. Tricky thing is though, is how do you pace a duel to work well on screen? So I've watched a fair amount of Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 and Brains and one of the things that feels like it's a bit tough to translate on the screen is how many combos exist in the game and how you sort of have to say and explain them vocally on screen. So if a character has to say, okay, I normal summon this and I use its effect to search this and I link it off and it makes this and I use this thing's effect in Grave to come back and I link both of them to make this thing and then I use its effect and gets this back and summons this thing and then I link it off. Yeah, that's not really gonna work and I think that will sort of drive people away. So the middle ground that I propose is basically using this existing modern Yu-Gi-Oh support, but just slowing it down. So for example, Yu-Gi is playing the Dark Magician support cards. And we know there are plenty of those in the TCG right now, and the deck can kind of go nuts if it gets a good hand. But we're actually going to just focus on a couple of cards early on in the duel. So Yu-Gi starts by normal summoning Magician's Rod. It's pretty weak, it's pretty basic. He uses its effect to get Magician's Circle. He uses Magician's Circle Two, search his deck for another Dark Magician card, and then he sets one card face down. We're gonna say it's Magician's Navigation. And then that's the end of the turn. Yes, I'm aware that the modern Dark Magician deck can do way more than that in the first turn, but this is how you sort of get his strategy rolling and begin to sort of build the steps of bigger plays for next turn. So now on his opponent's turn, Yugi's got a trap card that he can flip and you'd be like, you know, you activated my trap card, surprise and summon out the Dark Magician, and then use Dark Magical Circle to get rid of one of the opponent's threats. And that's sort of a type of disruption. It makes the turns feel interactive, and it stops there. And then on his next turn, he can begin to build on that. You don't have to see everything that Dark Magician can do in one single duel. Maybe one duel is just kind of about Magician's Circle and navigation, and then in a later episode, he introduces Eternal Soul, and some of the different fusion monsters that he has access to and some of the different ritual dark magician monsters that he's got access to. Perhaps later in the series, maybe around that Battle City recreation, is when we get to see Dark Magician Girl in her iconic first appearance and Yugi gets to use cards like Magician's Combination and Soul Servant that actually use both of the monsters together. And I think that this basic blueprint can work for a lot of different characters' archetypes and how their duels play out. The first turn is basically a setup turn, then the next turn involves some sort of a disruption, and then they can begin to build on it. It works for a lot of different archetypes because so many new Yu-Gi-Oh cards do involve basically searching for spells and trap cards and then having sort of recursion and stuff. You don't have to go crazy with super long combos and huge unbreakable boards, you can just work toward that and still have a back and forth duel going on. Basically think how we do our theme duels on this channel where we kind of hold back a little bit to make the duel more exciting. Yeah, that. And I definitely think that in this hypothetical reboot, we avoid a lot of the kind of blatant cheating where it's like, oh, the, the tide of the ocean affected the monsters and then giant soldier of stone attacks the moon. Like we can have moments like that through cards, but I think that we are kind of old enough now to not really need that for narrative tension. Now, I don't think it would be fair to make this video without also considering some of the potential downsides or just reasons why somebody wouldn't want 
a Yu-Gi-Oh! reboot to happen. And there are a few very valid, legitimate concerns. The biggest one that I usually hear is just that we've already been bombarded by enough nostalgia from the Yu-Gi-Oh! IP. If you play the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, then you already know that Yu-Gi and Kaiba's faces kind of get plastered on everything as is, right? This year's reprint tins had Yu-Gi and Kaiba on them. We got Yu-Gi and Kaiba sleeves earlier this year. We've seen these characters, we've seen Blue Eyes and Dark Magician get new support so often that it maybe feels a little bit tired. And that kind of extends to the general opinion on nostalgia these days. It's easy to feel like it's just sort of pandering, right? Here's a thing from your childhood being resold back to you. In Yu-Gi-Oh! in particular, it probably stings because a lot of the other Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series like 5Ds and Zexel don't exactly get very much love as is in terms of like cool shirts and other merchandise and figures and stuff like that. For the most part, those go to the original DM monsters and only recently have they been kind of exploring GX and 5Ds a little bit. So in that regard, I totally get it. Being exposed to nostalgia over and over and over like we so often are in just modern media culture as is today kind of feels boring and I hope that this could still be cool because it revisits the characters in a fresh new light but like, I totally get why somebody might not want that. The second really big thing is how a reboot like this would affect the original manga's legacy. I mean, Katsuki Takahashi passed away a couple of years ago, and so we'll never really know what his opinions on the idea of a reboot are. Like, I'm sure that it was proposed to him at some point, but it hasn't happened. So does that mean that maybe he isn't super interested in his work being sort of taken and reimagined like this and changed? There are a lot of purists out there who very much feel like, well, if Kazuki Takahashi is not at the helm in some way, then is it really even Yu-Gi-Oh at all? Can you really recapture that essence? Once again, I totally understand that concern. I think that Kazuki Takahashi had like a real sauce and X factor to his Yu-Gi-Oh character designs, the monster designs, just the whole world, that I think it would be tough to try to recreate that from scratch. But I do think making a work that sort of just reinterprets and builds on it somewhat doesn't feel offensive to me. However, I know this is going to be one that really divides people in the comments. Third concern, really more of a question is, how do you do the voice acting? Do you get the original dub voice cast back for this? Because we all know that Yugi's iconic voice, especially when he changes into Yami, is like, it, it's, it's Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Like this is the character. Dan Green is Yugi. Also, Eric Stewart is Kaiba. And you've also got, you know, your Wayne Grayson's, your Darren Dunstan, your Jonathan Todd Ross's Merrick. To the extent that, you know, if you didn't have them in this reboot, it just wouldn't feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! And I know people sometimes don't mind the original actors kind of being involved. In fact, a lot of them are much older now and some just might not actually be available to work anymore. So who knows? But I do think that for at least the English release of this, and there definitely should be an English release. This should not just be like a Japanese thing. Having a dub is very important here. Uh, those people should still be at least invited back and offered the chance to reprise their roles. I could totally see some side characters like Weevil and Rex probably getting recast in some way, but still, I do think that like having those main characters be recognizable again is crucial. And I think that the final big concern is like, is this all worth it? Would this work, right? Like, is the whole concept of slinging cards and summoning monsters or just playing trading card games in the real world still as like culturally significant. I mean, in a world where we've got social media and kids kind of just get like tablets and smartphones shoved in their faces and they're not really like buying trading cards, we know that even amidst just all of the trading card games out right now, they're still mostly played by adults. Like maybe the Pokemon TCG is the only thing where kids buy it, perhaps Disney Lorcana. But for the most part, when you go to your local card shop, or even if you see somebody looking at trading card games on the shelf at Walmart, it's probably somebody in their 20s or 30s. To be clear, I don't think that this is a reason not to do it. I still want to see how something like this would work, but I could totally see how for like some shareholder meeting, there might be some concerns about it. Um, and I just wanted to bring it up here because we were talking about everything else with this Yu-Gi-Oh! reboot, so why not? And then one last thing I just thought of is how this might conflict with the existence of Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duels and the whole like Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens and Go Rush universe, because those anime don't exactly feel like 
true Yu-Gi-Oh successors. Some people would maybe call them spin-offs, or you could say it's like a new type of Yu-Gi-Oh. They specifically promote the Rush Duel game, which is running sort of concurrently to their regular Yu-Gi-Oh card game. And if a new Yu-Gi-Oh anime came out, and it's actually not even new, it's like a reboot of the old thing, then like it just might feel like a bit of a, I don't know, conflict of interest of some kind. I think that both could coexist, and I still think it would be just in the interest of the general Yu-Gi-Oh IP regardless. Some people might say though that like if there was a Yu-Gi-Oh reboot that they should play Rush Duel instead of even playing the regular card game. And that's something that I think is probably worth exploring. In fact, I feel like if they were going to do it, maybe having them play with Rush Duel cards would make more sense because that's like kind of an existing product that they're trying to push. And there are a lot of old school monsters getting introduced in Rush Duel, so the timing could kind of work out. But I personally still am more of just an original kind of card game enthusiast here. However, just my opinion. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much all my thoughts on a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime reboot. I know I covered a lot here. I didn't actually expect this video to end up being as long as it was, but those are my ideas for it. This is how I think that a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime reboot could happen and what I think kind of needs to exist or what would seem cool. I'm very excited to hear what people have to say about this. I think that there will certainly be a lot of disagreements about exactly how it should be done, what would be the best approach to it. There are some people who hold the Yu-Gi-Oh manga in the highest regard, some people who are extreme anime fans, some people who just want to see the card game itself be integrated in, and people like me who just kind of love any Yu-Gi-Oh that they can get. Regardless of where you stand, thank you so much for sticking with me to this point in the video. If you liked it, definitely give it a thumbs up, let YouTube know that you did, share it with a friend, subscribe. For more Yu-Gi-Oh, feel free to join as a YouTube channel member if you want to support the channel financially. No pressure, you don't have to. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it. So um, keep it kind and respectful down below in the comments. I'll be reading and responding. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. I'll see you guys in the next one. Fast turn.